Alright guys, welcome back to another mCreator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is how to use the structure element and specifically the jigsaw uh, tab for the structures. Now I have a couple examples of how to, basically it's some buildings I've built, um, a house, a farm, a few different versions of paths. There's a corner piece as well. Uh, you can see there's a couple corner pieces. And there is a end piece uh, that we designed, or I designed, and I believe a house, barn, and farm. So those are the, the main things that I created. Um, we'll be using that as a baseline for the today's tutorial. Um, first, we'll be looking into the actual structure build world, and then we'll be looking into the settings in M Creator, and I'll just kind of run down quickly how everything works. I've already covered a pretty in-depth tutorial on doing it by hand. Uh, that can still be pretty valid for some more advanced features like processor lists, which I haven't covered a tutorial yet on, but um, I'm sure if you lock the code here, you'll be able to create a processor list and um, even expand the uh, element to make it a little bit easier for you to add such things. But without further ado, let's get into the build world and um, basically explain how I set it up. So just a quick note before we go into the build world, uh, one of the things that you might want to consider doing is creating a new world and calling it something like build world and or build or something like that. And then you could basically go to creative and then you want to go to world, set it to super flat, customize presets. And depending on what you want to go with, I suggest going with void because no entities will actually generate in there and then use that preset and then under um, you want to click done and then what you want to do is go to more and then game rules and then scroll down until you get to the world properties and you want to do turn off update weather and disable advanced time of day what this will do is it will basically disable the game rules for um, the day cycle and weather uh, events so it will just constantly be day and there won't be any weather which could um, affect your builds in some ways like if lightning strikes it could set it on fire or um, hard frames per second and stuff like that. So once you've done that, just click done and then create the world. Uh, that's basically what I did here and it made it a lot easier to actually start working with the buildings and stuff like that. I didn't have to worry about entities or other structures. So just some advice on making a build world for this kind of thing. All right, so let's get into the build world itself. So I have a quick um, example here of a few things we'll be covering. Um, a couple parts first structure or we'll cover structure blocks second and jigsaws jigsaw blocks first there's a few different things that are going on in this particular setup as you can see we have our paths so one two three and then we have our corner which is four and our end piece which is five so these are the basic rundown of the path types themselves and we have three different structures. We have a barn, which is a little bit larger than the house and the field. So I've categorized those particular structures, the field and the um, house themselves into a category for small structures. And then this one's like a large structure. So I've put it in its own category. That'll make sense in just a minute. We'll be covering the jigsaw blocks specifically and um but first we need to actually know what the parts are for so if you don't know how to get a jigsaw block you can do that quickly by going and get give and then at p if i can get the app p and then jig saw and then just if you hit tab then it'll come up and it'll give you a jigsaw block so once you have one of those, uh, you can kind of see how it basically gets placed. Whatever block face that you click on, it'll be facing that direction. So as you can see, this one's facing this way. The puzzle indicates the direction where the connection will happen. So basically any block that's facing this way will connect with that block like that. So these two parts will be exactly merged together when they happen. So they end up like this when they're 
when this, the chunk actually generates or the part of the structure generates. So it will end up where all the arrows are pointing into each other and it will match up the lines. Another thing is when you place it down, uh, there's a few extra additional settings that you can actually do with that. There's one called joint type. This is only for if it's facing up or down, but uh, basically rollable is allows it to rotate like this. Uh, where the aligned version will make sure that the line on the top and bottom are matched up. So you can use that to align certain props and stuff like that if you need it to actually generate in a specific rotation. Uh, again, this only works for the up and down. This doesn't work for the um, left or right. So if we... Uh, look at this one we don't have that option on this particular one it will automatically align with the line like this automatically so it's technically it's already aligned all right so that part's pretty clear uh, we have the settings in here so target pool think of a pool as a list of structures where it can get um, different structures from um, the name and target name are basically one thing. Um, basically, name is for when you're s trying to find a structure in a list, where target name basically specifies the name that you're looking for. Um, you only need a target pool and target name for a generating block, so a block that will expand uh -huh. out to another block. So, for example, this is a block that will branch off and generate either a farm or a um, house and basically what I needed to do was set up the target pool and the target name but I could leave the name empty which is actually required in order to make it so it doesn't generate back into the structure that we just placed. Uh, additionally, what we have is turns into, which allows you to basically generate, um, replace the jigsaw block with another block that uh, after it basically uh, runs the script. So when the structure is placed, after the structure will generate whatever part it connects to, or if it can't, then what will happen is it will replace it into that block. So for example, you can use your own blocks or uh, built-in blocks for other mods or whatever you want. Just make sure that you set up the the namespace and then followed by a colon and then the registry for that particular block and it should work. If the name doesn't actually generate properly, if you don't get the name, na the registry correct, then it will probably have some issues with generation. So make sure that you actually type the right registry if it exists or not. Um, when you're working with other mods, it needs to be in that mod in order to um, actually generate properly. So the mod has to be installed or it won't work if um, the structure is generated. So try to keep things under your own namespace or in the Minecraft, uh, things that Minecraft's already added. Um, additionally, there is two other uh, parts there is selection priority so basically this will select uh, highest number and basically make it the priority for the thing so it will count down in priority for basically generating the sides uh, for example um, if you set this to one then if there's multiple parts on this particular structure then what will happen is this one will run first and then because this one is zero this one would run second um, sometimes you might want a specific order to happen in that particular regard, but um, keep in mind that you can use that now for your priority. Placement priority is a little bit different. I couldn't figure too much out about it uh, other than it has to do with um, the order factor of which pieces are processed. So that's apparently what Wiki says. I, I don't really know too much about it. I'm assuming it has to do with the placement priority where the selection priority is something to do with selecting the particular part. I'm not sure if it has to do with the jigsaw block itself or a structure in the pool or how it all works, but um, I, both numbers, the highest one, will take priority. So you could do something like four and four, and then it will have priority over that particular one over compared to something like 
zero and zero so hopefully that makes sense i don't know too much about it it's still pretty new there's not a lot of documentation on it so i did my best um outside of that the other properties down here even though that minecraft now supports up to level 20 uh for the things we can only still use seven with the structure element so keep that in mind when you're actually generating your structures uh, it's a little bit different when you're working with something like this compared to a hand done actual modding system and these two you don't actually need to worry about um, these will basically just not be that important actually all three of these things are not important for the jigsaw block settings so with that being said we can finally go into how to structure them um, Hopefully that part makes sense uh, because it's going to get a little bit more confusing in just a second when I start throwing all the IDs and stuff around. Again, um, the target pool and target name are the for generating ones that e expand out where you only need the name for the target name that you use for your generator for it to find it. So basically think of this as a connector and these as the generator. Uh, the tar turns into you can work for both of them. Okay, so let's get into that part then. So here what I have is a connector type for the structure that I want to branch off of the path. What I've done is I've basically added a namespace for my mod. So this one's called Jigsaw. And then what I've done is I've gone ahead and called it small plot. And this groups these two into one category for when we specify it in the path itself for generation. So we have another one here, which is the house, which is called small plot. And on this particular connection, and I believe this these two connections, what it allows it to do is it allows it to generate small plots, which are the same width and the distance for this particular one. And these actually connect directly in the middle. So as you can see, like this right here is actually three by three, and these are three by three. So it will connect directly up to this particular um, path here. And same with this one over here, these are three and three. I also have a secondary one, which is um, Jigsaw, which is my namespace for my mod. And then large underscore plot, which allows me to connect these barns, which are a little bit larger into the um, these larger paths, which allow me to rotate the structure around and it will generate on either side here. Those are two different options for it to generate. Uh, one thing that you might notice is the target pool for this is called farm and then plots. Now this will make a little bit sense if we go into M creator quickly and our structure is called farm, but our actual pool name it's just plots. So basically when you're working with the jigsaw blocks and setting up your pools, you need to combine both your um, registry for your structure element. So this one right here, if you don't know your structure element um, registry, you can go and right click on the element and go edit registry name. And you're not gonna actually type anything out. You're just going to look at what the registry is. So in our case, it's just farm. And that's going to be combined with your pool name up here. So in our case, we have plots, which are where I'm sticking all the structures under. So in this case, we have farm underscore plot. So our registry of our structure and then our registry for our pool. So basically that's what it combines the two parts with. And it needs to be under our namespace. So in this case, my namespace for this actual workspace is called jigsaw and then it puts it under the structure and then the, the actual pool name and then basically from that pool what we're doing is we're just selecting a, um, a structure from a target which is basically defined with a jigsaw plot here so we have a large plot and then we have our two small plots which basically separates it a little bit more from one particular uh, pool and then it can specify subcategories for what it's going to be generating in. So as you see, these are small plots. And if we look at the pool on here, it's still farm plots, but it's selecting from the small pool name list. So hopefully that makes sense there. 
Uh, there is another um, section that I'm doing for paths. So there's one called farm underscore paths. And if we look at the registry, we have one called paths as well. So that's basically what's generating uh, the paths. And we have, um, I just stuck all the paths under one target name called paths and our namespace. So that what, what it will do is it will generate between all these different variants of paths and stuff. And the last one is actually really special uh, because we're not actually, even though that we're putting it under the paths namespace and everything like that, this is a little bit different because we didn't actually generate it in a version that can actually generate with our paths. It's actually an end piece. So if we look at our procedure, what I've done is I've saved it as path four and I've basically set it up so it will go into the end. And basically what this can do is the fallback pool name can be the end procedure. So rather than not generate anything, it'll try to attempt to generate the end piece of the path. So basically if there's a structure that can't be generated over here or so, for some reason, then what it's going to do is it's going to try to put this piece here, uh, piece over here instead. So hopefully that makes sense. It's just like a replacement thing if there's something that fails. Sometimes when it reaches the end of the world or something like that or the area where it can generate, it'll try to put one of those down instead. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so structure settings. Let's go into our structure settings now and take a look what we got for our structure. Um, this is probably the more advanced part now that we can start covering this. So we have biomes to generate in. You need to specify a biome for this to generate in. It doesn't work if you don't have a biome selected. Uh, you can use tags as well. So if you want it to generate in certain biomes, there's some built-in ones. Uh, as you can see, there's one for end, nether, and overworld. So these ones up, up here, and that will allow it to generate in any biome in those particular dimensions. I've gone ahead with the Minecraft is overworld, which will allow it to generate in anywhere in the overworld, even on oceans and stuff like that. Uh, the structure chunk distribution. So basically what this will do is it will allow you to generate um, structures depending on the uh, how common and distant array from it. There's a whole entire wiki page on uh, structures. I think I linked it in the last uh, version that I worked on Jigsaws. I'll see if I can't dig that page up again and put it in the description. Uh, basically what it allows you to do is control how frequent the structure will generate. Um, you can find this under the, if I open up notepad, I believe there's, I already have the files open. Uh, there is one for, uh, let's see here, nope, village, it's the structure set uh, for the village. Now if you don't know where to find that, uh, we can open up the, if you've extracted the files for the textures and assets, you can go to the Minecraft uh, folder, data, Minecraft, world gen, and then there is the structure set. And then you can find the settings for each one of these into that particular file. So spacing for villages are normally 34 where separation is eight. Um, you can base your structures based on these settings or customize it however you want. But uh, basically that controls the structure set, which um, allows the spacing of each structure. And then what we have is, if we go back to mCrater, um, basically the generate stage. So surface structures can be found, um, I believe on our structure file itself. And that would be the step variant. So that's located in the, let's see, world gen, I think it's under structures themselves. And then if you open up that one, it should open up the file for this particular thing. And your structures will have a step, which is where it's going to basically generate, like how it's going to generate. So it's going to be a surface structure. There's a few other ones that uh, t you can choose from. There's uh, layers of how it's going to generate and stuff like that, but generally you want surface structures for this particular thing. Uh, type of reference ground detection. Now this is also found under the structures file. This can be found under the 
project start to uh, start to height map, which is the world surface um, WG, which allows it to place it on the ground of the terrain. So basically things like water on the surface of water um, on train maps, it won't put it inside the water. It'll keep it floating in the water. So like on top of the water is basically anything that it can collide with. It will basically go ahead and place your structure there. Mostly terrain or um, it won't put it on other structures, but it will put it on the terrain. Uh, at least that's for the village. So there's that one. And there's other ways you can generate it that you can experiment with those. And then terrain adaption, this is called bear thin. This is what villages use for terrain adaption and it's called bear thin. There's a few different other ones. Uh, there's uh, berry, bread box, and none. Those are your options. And then structure to generate. So this is gonna be your starting structure. Um, for villages, what happens normally is it will generate your town square, uh, the town center, and then it will branch out from all four sides and generate different paths based on the um, processing list. And then from those uh, paths, what will happen is it will generate the buildings off of those paths. So basically that's the general structure of a village. Uh, you want your town center or whatever you start with for your structure to be in this particular one. And it needs to have your jigsaw blocks to start the process. If they're not linked up properly, it won't generate it additional parts. So make sure that you do that. And then you have projection to terrain, to the terrain, which is a little bit different because this is the path. What I've done is I've gone with terrain matching, which allows it to kind of flex uh, the terrain for the structure. It will do different levels and stuff rather than keep it straight where rigid will basically flatten the terrain and allow your structure to keep its form. So things like paths and uh, things that need to terrain match, you would basically want to use the terrain matching where your rigid would be for your buildings and stuff like your houses, your lamp posts for your um, light, your um, paths and stuff like that. Any props, this would all be rigid where your um, actual paths themselves would be terrain matching. And then down below what we have is blocks not to place. So you might want to place certain blocks. You might have noticed I've used white wool to keep the villager in because he's the time is currently um, just a little bit over there. It's I paused I set the time a little bit today so it would allow it to keep them up. If he's sleeping, there's a problem with the um, structure to actually generate. We'll get into the structure part in just a second, but um, basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that um, any blocks, uh, either structure blocks or any blocks that we don't want to generate in the structures for this particular one, the main structure, is basically selected here. So um, in this case, I probably didn't need the white wall because the only place that has it is the actual house so we don't need that really but I left it in there. Uh, jigsaw block um, we'll get into this in just a second I said we would cover the structure which is a little bit different so we have our size uh, we want it to be on save mode and then we want to give it a name and then we want to set the size for the offset which should be plus one on all axes and then on the opposite side, what you want is your structure size. So you can use the, um, what do you call it? The opposite corners. So your structure should be on the northwest bottom side where your opposite corner should be on the top uh, south east side. So basically if we look this way, we can see it's south east and that would be the top side. And then that one's on the northwest bottom side. So it basically encases your structure like this, uh, pretend this is like a house or something. And then you would basically do it on both sides like that. You would set your corner name to one or something that you haven't used locally. And generally this is just for, you'll need this just for this one time. So, and then we would basically go and set save and then click detect. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the first uh, corner piece that we have the same name as. So our structure name and our structure name, it'll align those 
uh, basically encase everything between this corner and that corner with your actual um, outline and then we know what size the structure is already now with that being said you don't need that particular block anymore you can delete it it's probably best too because if other blocks um, detect it it will try to find the same name and it could cause some issues so make sure to clean clean up the corner part after um, after that uh, we have include entities what that will do is anything inside this area that um, basically generates uh, the structure so in this case I have horses in this barn uh, these will actually generate different skins based on it uh, we want it to um, include the entities so it will generate any entities in that particular area same thing with the house itself we're generating the entities and when you want something to basically replace uh, this particular area like you might want to consider using jigsaw blocks uh, which will allow other blocks priority over the generation. You might want to do that in some cases, but in some other cases you might not want to do that. Yeah. It depends on what you're working with and how you're generating the structures. Uh, for yeah. underground structures like basements and stuff like that, you might need to use, fill in the area that is air uh, in your actual structure. If it's a surface structure with cave air, underneath the block itself this will allow structures to um, be treated as a cave system which will basically prevent uh, other blocks from taking priority naturally uh, this is even without putting structure void blocks down it will just it ge just generates that way generally so hopefully that makes sense once you've saved it uh, save it to something like minecraft farm or something like that and then what you can do is you can actually go into your Minecraft workspace, open up the folder, and it will be under your run folder, your client, and then your saves, and then whatever world that you named it. This is why I said you should probably name it something like build world so you can easily find it. And then it will be under your world folder, generated, Minecraft, structures, and then finally your structures will be located here. Um, when you need to make changes to something that has a bug or something like that, maybe you have um, something like, maybe this grass was um, not generating or maybe you wanted to replace that with a bush or something like that. What you'll have to do is you'll have to go to that folder and delete the um, name of that structure and then you'll need to go ahead and save it again. Uh, that will make sure that the MBT actually is generated properly. I've noticed that um, if it's not um, removed before you save it again, there is a chance that it can uh, mess up with the saving wow. process if it's trying to replace the file. So just keep that in mind when you're actually saving the structures. Um, that's pretty much it. There isn't really anything else that you need to worry about. You can turn on or off the invisible blocks through here. This makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Um, the structure voids are kind of a pinky color. Air blocks are blue. Those are a really good indicator to know what are, um, basically what's generating, but that's basically the only difference. All right, so back to the jigsaw block. We'll get quickly finish up that with the structure procedure. One other thing that I should probably mention is when you save your structures, if you don't delete your building world, um, which you shouldn't actually because all your structures are saved there, you want to go to the structures tab and just import all of them from your build world. It should list the world name on the left hand side and then the actual structure name on the right. So basically I've already imported all of these. That's why they're all on this side here. If you replace your structure, make sure to delete the structure first and then re-import it or the changes won't apply properly. All right, so going back to our farm, we have our paths for our pool name and then we have our pool for plots. And I've specified all the structures down here under the, the, the structures that should generate. And then we have more options for rigid and train matching. So those are the same things that we had under the first page here for train matching and rigid. So that's the same thing, uh, just for different structure parts. And then we have blocks to not place. So under the house, I don't want that white wool to generate because that's what I'm using to keep the villager in. So basically, I just basically put this under um, 
blocks to not generate and it'll basically remove that and just ignore it in the structure for placement. Uh, we also can specify a fallback pool, which allows us to generate a structure if this structure can't generate something. So, for example, if the paths generate past this point or something like that, or reach the end, then what we'll do is we'll pull from the final path or final pool down here, which is called end, and it will get uh, the structure for one, which is the end piece at the very end there, and it has a weight of one and we're just doing train matching because it's a path type and we're basically generating it there if you want to create a new pool what you can do is you can create a add pool and then type your name in there again it's going to be the same name as your registry for your structure and then whatever's after that will be in this box here will be your pool name so again if you're looking in your minecraft world it would be farm underscore plots because this is our structure it's registry is farm so it would basically be like that um you can add uh different settings weight is based on 100 percent. so if you have uh three structures like this uh this is 30 percent 30 percent 30 percent and then we have a 10 percent chance for this one which is the corner piece so straight takes priority over the actual piece for the um the corner uh, you can flip that around and have more corner pieces or you can keep it all the same number and it will have an equal amount of um, weight which will have them all generate randomly basically it will have an even chance but um, easiest way is to keep it under a either a hundred percent probability or a ten percent like I did here and then you can kind of gauge how much is going to be generating based on that particular weight system. Um, it doesn't matter if these numbers, it could be 40% and it will still equal to 100% of the whole, but uh, this one will have higher priority. So it's a little hard to explain the weight system. I suggest looking it up on Wiki if you, you don't understand it fully, but um, basically because we have a, a total maximum number of 10 here, it equals out to 100% still and we can kind of gauge how it's going to be generating based on those values. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And then our structure, we can select our structure here from the list and then we can go ahead and select the type of train matching and disable the blocks. If you want it to not generate a specific or have an end, like a, a fallback pool, then you can specify it at the top here. If you want to add another entry, uh, what you can do is you can click on this one, this add button, and it'll create another list for your entry. So that's basically all there is to it. It's not too complicated. Uh, the only downside for this system is you don't have access to um, the processor lists. Uh, this would still have to be done manually, which uh, some villages and stuff actually use for things like farms. Uh, basically, how farms work is um, any wheat in that particular thing is randomized from a processor list, which allows it to change the types of crops. You can change any block in a structure if you really wanted to. If you wanted certain torches to only be placed, you could actually randomize that and make it so the processor list would only generate like one in 50% chance or like one in five or a half 50 percent chance or something like that of generating a torch so it can be useful for actually doing more advanced stuff but currently it doesn't support processor lists so this would have to be locked and then you would have to add it manually i might do a tutorial on that in the future i'm still pretty backlogged for things that i need to cover but hopefully this makes sense and is easy for you to get started now um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll hopefully be able to help. Thanks for watching. Peace out.